Infra is a source engine based adventure game created by Loist Interactive and is focused on puzzle solving and exploration. The game is played in first person, though you don't have any weapons. Infra is the Steam debut for Loist Interactive, a small gaming development and self publishing firm located in Finland. They started working on the game back in 2011 and had it greenlit on Steam two years later. They managed to reach over 45,000 people voting to say that they would purchase the game once it was released. You play as a structural analyst who becomes unsettled whilst having to work in unsafe conditions. The game is gritty, down to earth, and goes for a realistic approach. As you travel through the infrastructure of the city, you will find that your actions and thorough observations ultimately determine if others will survive. A society obsessed with upgrading has brought disaster upon itself, and it's your job to fix it. Instead of shooting and heavy action, you will rely on your cutting wits to survive puzzles in an incredibly detailed world. Infra is all about the atmosphere and mechanics of the world. The game at first appears to be a first person horror game, but it's much more about discovery and exploration. You find yourself exploring and making your way through 26 levels with intricate passages, paths, and areas to discover. You become trapped in a labyrinth of hallways buried under ruins that are well designed and interesting to explore. The one main thing that stood out to me was the sheer amount of detail and careful consideration the designers have put into creating a realistic and believable world. Infra starts out a little slow when it comes to the puzzle solving, but after a while you'll be facing numerous challenges. The world is very large and there's plenty to explore and discover. I would describe the game as a walking simulator, but not in a negative way. Games like Gone Home have gone for a similar approach, and it's more about creating an immersive experience with things to discover, and strong use of environmental storytelling. The most interesting and well-designed parts of the game are the environmental puzzles and unsettling atmosphere. Some of the puzzles affect life in the city around you, depending on your choices. Thereby, the choices you make can have bigger consequences beyond just getting past the level. The challenge of the puzzles can get quite tricky at times, but ultimately, they felt satisfying. The game manages to incorporate interesting puzzles into a beautifully realized and designed world. The puzzles will make you think, and the exploration gives you time to be absorbed in the world. The game has automatic checkpoints that are well placed and help you through the game. All that you have at your disposal is a flashlight and a camera. You have to use the camera to take pictures of areas and structural problems within the environments. The game has a linear path that you follow, but the areas are pretty open and allow for exploration. At times it can be a bit unclear of where you're supposed to be heading, as there's no minimap or objective directions. I have to say that I really enjoyed simply exploring the world in Infra. You spend a lot of time looking for clues and objects that will help you progress forward. Infra feels slow paced, but it does a clever job of creating tension at critical moments. Part of the experience is to distress the player and make you try and quickly solve a problem in the face of demise. The game uses various visual tools and clues to guide you such as newspapers and graffiti that suggest urban myths. These add a sense of depth and context to the world. I only had a couple of issues with the game. Firstly, the movement can feel a bit clumsy at times. I found I would get stuck on parts of the environment and there were a couple of frame rate drops. I also found it frustrating in parts where you have to use objects such as crates to climb on. They would topple, get stuck, and were generally frustrating. You can see the game take inspiration from Half-Life and Portal when it comes to some of the mechanics and puzzle situations. The battery on your flashlight runs out pretty quickly, but luckily there are plenty of spare batteries to pick up. The puzzles are never too challenging, but difficulty does increase later on. I liked how the game would have hidden clues and written messages to help you solve certain puzzles. The characters you talk to feel a bit bland and uninteresting, but you're spending the majority of the time on your own. The overall presentation of the game is impressive. The game looks gorgeous at times, and I enjoyed exploring the interesting environments. I played the game with max settings on my PC. Unfortunately, with the game running on max settings, it did cause a few framerate drops. I was really impressed with how the lighting was used in the game, with interesting ways of illuminating certain scenic areas. The game has parts that take place indoors and outdoors, and there is a good variety of locations. The sound design is good enough, and helps create a sense of atmosphere and tone. I have to say that I didn't care too much for the voice acting, and found it a bit irritating at times. 
I can see why they put it in the game, and it does add a layer of depth and helps draw the player into the world. The music in the game works well and helps add tension as it slowly escalates to exaggerate certain moments of suspense. The outdoor environments look more impressive than the indoor environments, but overall it looks great with detailed textures. I have to say that I liked how the game doesn't use a HUD at all, as it keeps the screen clear and makes the game feel more immersive. Overall, Infra is a good game with some interesting ideas. I like how it focuses purely on exploration and discovery without the need for scary moments or weapons. The puzzles are well designed and carefully placed throughout the world. They start off easy, but they become more challenging later on. Clues can be found in the environment and the game does a good job of using environmental storytelling to add more depth to the experience. I'm sure there are things I missed throughout my journey, and it would be interesting to see what I could find on a second playthrough. I would certainly recommend this game if you like games like Myst or The Witness. Infra is available for $15 on the Steam Store. Thanks for watching, King Gamers! Make sure to like and subscribe, and check out our channel for more reviews, let's plays, and weekly giveaways. Also, check us out at KingGamer.com for all of the latest gaming news. Stay keen, King Gamers!